We didn't come this far to slow down now. Let 2021 be the year that you light up, that you wake up, that you shake up that special something in your soul, that you reach out and work for that health, that life, that vibrant living you know is possible. Let this be the year. Let this be the day. Let this be the moment that you believe in miracles again. Hey everybody, it is Dr. Devin and I have a very intriguing and special episode for you today. This one's going to be brand new for me um, with a new friend, a new mentor here that I just saw on Instagram and was like, I want to connect with this person. It might have been that she has the best first name ever. So this is going to be a Devin and Devin episode. Please welcome Devin Grinrod. Hi everyone. Hey Dr. Devin, thank you so much for having me on. Oh, I'm excited to play. Um, that's what I do love about social media, right? In a time where there are lots of different angles that we could complain about social media, it is such a gift and tool to get to do things like this. And I'm not all zoomed out yet, right? Like this gives us prime time to connect across the ethers. Um, so tell anybody listening, watching today, a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, so... I am an intuition development coach and Reiki master. And what I do is I help people to tune into the divine power that we hold within. I believe that we are all spiritual beings having a human experience. And that being said, we have that connection, that innate connection to the spirit world. And that is what our intuition is. Our intuition is our human connection to our higher soul self. And when we look at things from the soul perspective, we see things more clearly, we see things objectively. And so when we can tap into that power, that intuition, we can reclaim our sovereignty because when we have that intuition, when we are divinely guided, we don't need to outsource our power, our decision-making skills, our health, our wellness, anything along those lines. And as a Reiki master, I help people to heal from trauma on an energetic and spiritual level. I believe we as people have four different components to our body. I believe it's mind, body, spirit, and energy. And we do such a wonderful job in our society of honoring the mind and the body, but we leave out that spirit and that energy. And when we start to heal in that deep, that cellular, that energy body, that spiritual level is when we really can overcome our traumas, our problems, and have that post-traumatic growth, which means you you're, you grow through what you go through essentially. And yeah, that's what I do in a nutshell. So you all can see why I was magnetically drawn. Um, and I love that the sun is rising and shining onto your face as we're doing this. I don't think that's a mistake. Um, and I can say uh, in doing the first you know 30 episodes of this podcast, Almost every guest, but definitely 10 that I can think of just right off the bat. When I said, what's the one thing you wish people knew? They said, you got to trust your intuition. Go to your intuition. Trust your knowing. You already have the tools. Almost every single guest is sending people inward, not outward. Right. And so in a world filled with chaos and questions and it's this way or it's that way. And there's there's just a lot of. um fog, right? And and so the way through this time is listening inward. And so the, the tools that I think you can offer people that are listening, watching, and those that you serve um, is priceless in a time like this, right? And I think it's part of the medicine of this transformation that we're going through as a collective, right? It's like, I think for a long time, we've, you know, looked up to doctors and we've, we've handed over power to governments and we've really like hierarchy just said, here, you take it. And now is a time where the power is coming back to the people and it will have to. Um, So the premise of the show, right, is this notion that there's something or one big thing that we wish people understood. And if they got that premise, if they got that thing, then it would change the way that they look at the world and it might empower the way they create their health or happiness. So for you, um, 
Mm, I'm excited to hear this. What is, what's one thing you wish that more people understood or trusted? That every single answer you need, you can get from within. And, you know, in doctor's offices, with the government, nobody will ever know you as well as you know yourself. And with doctors, we hire them. They work for us. Every time we go into that, their office, even though we're entering their space, they work for us. They are our employers. And that goes for practitioners as well. I tell my clients this all the time. This isn't, I don't relegate this just to allopathic medicine. And with government, same thing. We elect them. They work for us. We don't work for them. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. once you realize the true power that you have as a human being, that you are fully capable and able to make any and all decisions for your health, wellness, freedom, and safety, that power cannot be taken away from you. Mm-hmm. And it, it's only with our permission that we give it away to these people. Guys, feel that for a second. Close your eyes um, and put your hand on your heart and pick a topic, right? We could pick a whole host of them or pick something that's going on in your health. Maybe you're not satisfied with the, the physical state of your health or your, your physical body. Maybe you're frustrated with the relationship or finances or a whole host of different things going on in the world. And what if you had the power in your own hands? What if it was a matter of giving permission away instead of owning the decisions that you're making? Um, Changes the game. Yes. Yeah. Um, Tell us, you know, firsthand experience, you know, A, how'd you come to this and B, what's it done for you? What question? Am I allowed to say the V word here? Absolutely. Okay. So I am, I suffered vaccine injury. I was coerced by my gynecologist to get the HPV vaccine and it did not go well for me. I have MTHFR genetic mutations. And of course that wasn't tested before I was given the vaccine or any vaccine that I've received in my life. And I developed an autoimmune disease. I had heavy metal poisoning. I went from being a healthy 26 year old. I had just finished my yoga instructor training. So I was super fit, really active. And I went from that to, I could not spend a full day out of bed because I had migraines and my body was just so exhausted. I needed to lay down and that's at 26. (laughs) My liver, when I tell you my liver was so hurt and destroyed, I had a three day hangover from a half a glass of wine I ate with a meal. Mm -hmm. And so I was not doing well. I went to six allopathic practitioners, three general practitioners and three specialists. And every time I mentioned the V word, I was completely dismissed. Mm -hmm. Nobody would test me for heavy metals. Nobody would listen to me. I was told that all of my blood work came back normal because they weren't testing what I asked them to. And that maybe I could, I should see a psychologist because my symptoms were more mental than they were physical. And it was not until Actually, my chiropractor told me about the heavy metal poisoning because he had seen me for a while. And in his office, um, I was explaining what was going on and he asked me if I had ever had any vaccines. And I looked at him and I was like, well, yeah, but what does that have to do with this? You know, vaccines are safe. And he just gave me that, oh, sweetie, look (laughs) and handed me a book titled uh, The Well-Adjusted Child and told me to read chapter 12, I believe. And my mind was blown. And that was just my entry to the rabbit hole. And I have not looked out of that rabbit hole since. And it just just brought me on a journey. So my journey to wellness from there um, was achieved through holistic practices. So I had my chiropractor and my acupuncturist at the time. They were helping me. And the work that they did help. Um, I was really, really dizzy. It was, it was like going on a hamster wheel forward as well as um, side to side. So when I was walking, I just kind of had to pick a point in front of me and hope I would reach that destination. Um, So chiropractor and acupuncture fixed that. And then somebody introduced me to an amazing nutritionist and she really helped me detox the heavy metals from my body. I'm still actually going through energetic detoxes. I don't know if you can see a bump here, but um, I'm working with an energy practitioner and I have a crystal taped to my arm to take the energy of the vaccine out of my body. And so it's just constant self-advocacy. So I had to advocate 
for six different practitioners, go into their office, tell them what was going on. And, you know, by the time I got to the sixth practitioner, I was a little bit versed in it. I had at least read the vaccine inserts. And so when they came at me with the, no, that's impossible. I said, well, I read the vaccine insert and I have about half of that paragraph of symptoms, um, but still nobody would listen. And that is when I decided to leave allopathic medicine. I go to allopathic medicine to get a physical so we get a discount on insurance and that's about it. My acupuncturist is my GP and. And, and guys, uh, I think it feels important because this is, these stories have come up on, on multiple episodes of this and they're, they're being censored and, and dismissed all over the place with anti rhetoric, right? Like if you hear the word anti beware, because it's, it's meant to drive negative emotion around these things, this woman right? Has no mo. I can't imagine a motive to tell a story that's untrue. Right. And this is, this is your path, your medicine. And, and where I do think a lot of allopathic doctors are waking up to this at the same time as a lot of people are to accept that these side effects that are listed or to accept that stories like this or some of the other ones you've heard on this podcast are true and possible means that they have to loosen their grip on the paradigm they live in. So mm -hmm. this is what we're living in is a shattering of a paradigm that we've all lived in because we're trying to make it this either or, either you're pro or you're anti. And the reality is that it has nothing to do with that, right? And why chiropractors and acupuncturists and Reiki and a lot of these practitioners have been quicker to hold space for the people who've gone through these things is from a paradigm standpoint. I mean, I'll never forget walking into the chiropractic school and I was pre-med and the, the first speaker, Dr. Carl Cleveland said, you know, the power that made the body heals the body. Your power's on the inside. There's this innate intelligence. And I'm like, whoa, I'd never heard it because it was new to me at the time. And so by nature, chiropractors, acupuncturists, Reiki, the roots of their paradigm are powers on the inside, you know, and, and by the roots of allopathy, it is what's the symptom, what's going on, what's the outside fix, drugs or surgery. So I want to get us as much as possible out of the, the anti or, or pro and rooted more in this solid ground of asking whoever's listening or watching, do you believe your powers on the inside or the outside? Because that determines your choices and then determines your reality. And what you're saying is you lived in one world and had this crossover, so to speak, of experience. What tools could you gift for people that maybe are new to conversations like this, or maybe who've been in them that, that are like, I think she, I, I may know somebody that's gone through this. I'm somebody who's going through this. I, I need to own the power within. What are some tools that you would say served you or serve your, your, the people that you work with as they learn to trust this intuition? Just say perseverance. And with intuition, you're not going to get it right every, every time. Even, especially in the beginning, I hear from a lot of people, oh, my intuition is wrong and broken. And that's because there's two kind of voices that we have going on within us. We have our first voice, which is our fear and our ego. And that comes from our reptilian brain that is trying to keep us safe. And when we listen to that, it is a more constricting voice. And we need that reptilian brain because that is the voice in our head that says, don't jump off the roof. Don't put your hand on that really hot surface. I'm not trying to hate on the ego. We need it. Mm -hmm. um, but our intuition is, it comes to us in many, in different ways. So I don't know if you, you all have heard of clear abilities. We have, uh, I'll just talk about the most common one uh, really quickly, which is clear sentience. And it's that feeling of, um, just a feeling in our body that's associated with information. I'm sure everybody has had that experience where they've had that gut feeling or butterflies in their stomach, or, you know, we'll go into clear cognizance, which is just knowing something. You just know that something is right or wrong or what have you. And so there are these little ways that our, our higher self. So with our intuition, as I mentioned, it's our higher self, it's our soul form communicating to us. There can be other ways that the spirit world communicates, but today we'll just keep it to intuition. Um, and so finding the ways in which our intuition works with us so we can learn what it, 
what those actual intuition messages are versus our ego and our fear. Because our ego and our fear are the ones that want to keep us safe, keep us in our comfort zone. Um, but our intuition allows us to expand from that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And the sole purpose of our intuition is to align us with our soul's mission here. And each and every one of us have a mission, have a goal and magic to share with the world. That is why we have chosen to, in my opinion, reincarnate in this life. If reincarnation isn't for you, leave that here. Take what resonates. Um, and it's just about learning those communication styles that our intuition is having with us so that we can move forward. Um, and if you get it wrong, that's okay. You're going to get it wrong. It's just as important to know what the no's feel like mm. as it is to know what the yeses feel like. And when I first started down my path and I was like, Hey, I'm going to listen to my intuition all the time, but side note, I'm really stubborn. So it was not all the time. Um, I would get those messages and when they were wrong, I would say, thank you so much ego for letting me know what your voice sounds mm -hmm. like. And when I would get my intuition messages, I would say, thank you so much for communicating to me and letting me know that information. I would really like to hear more of it. And what, what was one of the biggest uh, transformations for me in that time period was being flexible with myself. So if I got a message that felt like intuition, but I didn't feel like following it and then something happened after, <laughs> I would, I reframed my talk from negative self-talk and being disappointed in myself and, and you know, you know how that spiral goes. Um, and I would just say, thank you so much intuition for communicating with me. I'm going to work on listening to you further. And then I would have a conversation with myself, be like, self, you are well within the right to choose whether or not you want to listen to information that you receive. It's your choice. You know what happens when you don't listen to your intuition and you know what happens when you do. That's your decision to make. And so just being kind with yourself and allowing the process to unfold. It's totally a journey and it's not going to be, you're not going to reach enlightenment in one day. Right. Yeah. We probably won't reach it fully here. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's a lot of work. So right. It's, <laughs> it's the joy is in seeking to understand at, mm -hmm. at different levels, higher levels, um, more peace filled levels. Um, and, and so I know one of my favorite books, um, that references some of these things and guys, I'll, I'll make sure that I ask Devin to share some resources um, and put together a few links in the show notes. But one of the books that I love is The Subtle Body. And it goes through like, you know, we, we are energetic beings and um, energy comes in multiple languages, chiropractic, acupuncture, prana, chakras. Um, it talks about the clair senses um, and it's put together in such a like left and right brain friendly way um, that I, I liked it very much. Do you have any books that you um share out to people that want to seek, seek into this a little bit? Yeah. So I love journey of the souls, which is written by a psychologist about the work that he did with his patients that made him, um, look into the spirit world in a new light. And, um, I'm blanking on the second one I wanted to say, so I'll change it. Uh, you can heal your life by Louise Hay mm. is a really good one. Cause it gives a lot of it it talks about having power within, just as you were saying, Dr. Devin, where, you know, the energy that created the body heals the body. And that is pretty much Louise Hay's life work mm -hmm. um, from what I've seen. So if you haven't read those books and oh. I mean, subtle body, amazing. 10 out of she, 10. Uh, recommend. <laughs> she's one of those people that like, I keep a tribal council, but like when I go, wherever I go from here of like, in my mind, soul beings that I just want to sit around a campfire with. Mm -hmm. She's one of them, right? Like she changed the game and has influenced everyone that speaks mm -hmm. in, in these kinds of fields and, and heal your body, heal your life. Um, you know, I keep a little bookmark on my phone of like her alchemy of symptoms, right? So like if I get a toothache or if my wrist hurts, or if my, if I'm getting pain in my back, I want to look at like, what might be the emotional ties to this? What, what stuck energy am I, um, you know, what is, is talking to me right now. It just gives me a different perspective, right? I think we yeah. have been told or taught maybe that everything is so physical, but you, you introduced us in this conversation, physical, um, you got the body, the mind, the spirit and the energy. 
And it's all, you know, our reality becomes a reflection of each of those. Um, and, and those, I, I'm so glad you brought her up. Um, what, uh, what would you say to, um, people in the here and now, right? Like how could they apply this today to serve them in the journey that we're in, in 2021? Um, you know, for anybody that's, you know, like, man, I'm, I'm really going to have to leave behind this world that I knew where I just like, I lived in that you sicky me fixy box. And I went to the doctor and said, here, fix me. Um, give them a little bit to, I guess, serve the certainty and the, and the trust that this, this higher self road leads to greener pastures. So just like with any other awakening, there, it's going to be difficult, difficult. At least for me, what was the most difficult part is reading the research and understanding that the knowledge about these safe and effective practices not being safe and effective is out there and it's well known. And that was, I mean, that hurt my soul. Um, so that realization to me was difficult. And which is why I really believe there's a lot of people out there who are choosing not to do this, you know, dig for information and, and go down this rabbit hole because it hurts to find out that the system that you trusted and believed in your whole life was built to not serve you. Um, but as you go down your spiritual path, the best way to start is just to ask, mm -hmm. to sit quietly, find a little corner of peace, take a few breaths and offer up whatever you believe in, whatever you see your, that higher power as, and just say, I'm ready to receive your information and wisdom. Please use me as a tool and align me on my soul's mission. And when we talk to spirit, we always offer up. We don't demand, we don't ask, we, we just offer. If it's okay, if it's part of my soul's journey, could you please give me this information or, you know, something along those lines, you're very kind and open-ended and, and then just wait. Sometimes it's almost instantaneous. You'll see a sign from spirit almost immediately. Sometimes it takes a couple of weeks, a month or two, uh, but you will always see the sign. And when I really, well, uh, sorry about that. When I really started down this work, um, so shortly after my husband and I got married, we went on a four month journey to Southeast Asia, just exploring and that changed our life. And when I came back, I knew I wanted to start my business and I was pretty sure it would be a side hustle. And I was applying to jobs everywhere for three months and nobody would hire me. And I was qualified for almost all of these jobs. And I, I finally sat down and offered up to spirit because I felt like my head was hitting against a wall. And when I, you know, when you do that in life, it's not that what you're doing is wrong. It's just that you're not going down the path that is best for you. So I sat with spirit and I offered up. I said, please show me the direction. It's very clear that I'm not going on the right path. Could you please give me a sign? And about a week later, I got an email from uh, the program director, director at an addiction recovery facility. And she said, you, the job you applied for, you were high, like wildly unqualified to do. But I saw that you were a Reiki practitioner. Could you come in and talk about Reiki? And so I went into her office and the conversation went something along the lines of, we want to hire you. Um, and can you have a business in two weeks when you'll have your first session? And so I took that as a yes. And so, okay, preface back. When I talked to spirit, I said, please make this a big sign. We both know I'm stubborn. So if you're one who really just needs like literal neon lights in front of you, you can ask for that. Ask for anything and you shall receive. Mm. Um, so I left that office like Googling how to start a business. I had no idea if it took three minutes or six weeks, but I knew that spirit was telling me it had to happen. So- just and that's, I mean, it's biblical, right? It's, it's yeah. where would you have me go? What would you have mm -hmm. me do? Ask and it is given. I mean, these are old ancient lessons from, and, and I love that. And it's, I can't, I mean, we all remember the little song, the row, row, row your boat. Right. <laughs> and, and so in your story there, there's the visual of like, you're trying to paddle against the stream and the universe, mm -hmm. God, whatever we want to anchor, um, you know, this higher self too, because it's maybe a little different for all of us, um, is, is saying, Hey, let's go this way. Like there's ease this way. And so leaning in and learning, like, where's the resistance, where's the ease, show me, show me. 
guys, this is ultimate freedom. And it, um, it is, it's fun and it's play and it's joy. And it's like literally a game of hide and seek of some sorts of, Mm -hmm. you know, well, if I'm anchored in, I want a life of joy and freedom, show me the way. And you ask for these signs and you trust and you say yes, when doors open, it does it ever. I mean, like it just keeps getting better, right? We keep learning new things that, that prove what we're talking about. Definitely. And this, If you had told me that I would be a Reiki practitioner and energy worker, I would have just looked at you like you're crazy. Because when I first heard about Reiki, honestly, my first thought was that sounds fake. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I'm a very Mm -hmm. um, hands-on person. I have to have those experiences for myself. And I come from a very research-based background. I have a degree in psychology. I was in two psychology labs. And so I have that very logical kind of research experimental mindset and when I had my first Reiki session it was so profound and I think it's because spirit was like we know how stubborn she is like let's just kind of blow her away with this and they did I I came out of the Reiki session I mean when I tell you it was profound like I saw a past life I saw my family in that past life my grandfather who's one of my strongest spirit guides came through And just the Reiki practitioner at the end knew so many different things about my body. She was talking about the knee injury I had and Mm -hmm. all this stuff. And I was like, how would you know that information? Like that is nowhere on social media. I've never told you that. Mm -hmm. And so it was just this crazy profound experience that I believe was put there to say, you know, hey, this is real and this is something you need. Because I left that session thinking, I need to be a Reiki practitioner. And I think within a month or two, I was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the universe loves speed. So like when you do say yes to something, just like you said, a business can start in two weeks. You know, I hear a lot of people go, but I, I like this, but I don't know how, or I really want to switch careers or I really want to make a move. And it's like, it feels really big, but the second you turn yourself over to yes, things can happen very, very quickly. Now, um, we could probably go on and on about this. And I love the the collection of advice that you've given because it is a balance in this, you know, do the research, look at the facts of, of, of what some of these, you know, medical treatments are. What are those side effects? They wouldn't list those side effects if they hadn't happened. We wouldn't have $4 billion paid out in injury in, in that court system for the V um, if injuries and death hadn't happened. And so like it, we have to stay curious. We have to stay open. We have to ask better questions and we have to be ready to take our, our power back. And you've given people so much in listening to these inner voices and, and staying graceful and, and persevere when it's hard, because it's like anything you lift weight for the first time, it feels heavy. Mm -hmm. But as you lift it over and over again, all of a sudden it gets easier and easier. And so this is a skill that we have, we have to relearn, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for anybody that wants to connect with you, let them know where to find you. um, So that if they have questions on, on this, or if they want to visit you in person or schedule appointments, what's that look like? How do they find you? Uh, So I'm on just about any social media platform and my name is my business, Spiritually Balanced. So the places I'm most active are TikTok and Instagram. And if you'd like to look at my website, it is spirituallybalanced.com. And yeah. Well, guys, I, um, you can, you can see again, why I was drawn to invite her to be here and there might need to be some more Devin and Devin episodes, um, coming up. And I, I love again, when the, the universe just weaves us together so that we can, share a little story time like this and we just never know who it serves. So if you're listening and it was helpful or it sparked some curiosity in you, send it to a friend that might be in need and, um, and lean in and don't be afraid to reach out to either one of us if you need support or if you have questions um, because we don't have it all figured out. Um, Connection and community help us thrive. You're not alone and you don't have to do healing alone. So I hope that this um, just helps strengthen your tool belt. Devin, I appreciate you. I hope you have a beautiful day and that sun just continues to shine on you. Um, I, I mean, I took a whole page of notes. We'll make sure you guys get show notes, but we love you. And I hope that this empowers you to trust that intuition. So thank you.
Thank you all so much for listening on the other side of the internet. And thank you, Dr. Devin, for having me on. And I'm so happy that we connected because like you said, we need that community of people who are advocating for themselves. Because I think that the harder we see people advocate for themselves, the more permission it gives us to advocate for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, you know, quiets that fear and ego that we all still carry. And um, it helps us individually and collectively heal and um, evolve so much. So everybody out there, have a beautiful day, dot, dot, dot. We will, we will see you soon. Lots of love. Mwah. Thank you, Devin. Bye. Bye.